I have been following you for a while on social media. Um, and something that you do really well is just really taking the emotions of the moment, especially in the past two years in the pandemic and the rise of anti-Asian violence and, and harassment, you take that moment of whether it's about bullying or, or racism and you turn it into something empowering through your video that also includes your personal story, your personal view on the moment, and also about food and cooking. So how did you, how do you do that? Like, what's your process for searching, you know, what your voice is going to be, why it will matter in that moment, and how to tell that story through your, your perspective? Well, Michelle, that's a really great question. And thank you so much for the kind words about my content. As I'm sure you know, trying to find that perfect arc of storytelling to leave an, a memorable impact on your readers or your listeners or your watchers can be a little bit complicated, particularly when you're tackling subjects that tend to be divisive, like politics or race. And so there are a lot of things that I try to use as tools to help make sure that my message is reaching as many people as possible. One of them being food, as you know, because everybody needs to eat. I don't care what your political background is, what your race is, what your gender is, how old you are, you're a human being, you need to eat food. And so that's like the first gate that I'm trying to unlock for people is look, look at my food, it's so delicious, right? And then when we start talking about some of these harder topics, you're right, I share personal stories because I want people to feel like I'm not judging them. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm simply sharing my own experience, which of course I am the number one authority on my own experience. You can't tell me what I feel or what I experience. Then in terms of the topics that I'm tackling, whether it's race or bullying or, or body dysmorphia, we have all been so bereft of power over the past two and a half years. We're stuck in quarantine or, you know, because of the global pandemic, we feel powerless. We watch all of these things that are happening on the news. And again, we feel powerless. So what I wanted to do in each of these videos is to give a little bit of that power back to everyone to say, hey, despair cannot be the answer. Hope is the answer. And we can find hope in each other. We can find hope in breaking bread with one another. We can find hope in our stories. And that's what I hope to convey 